Hey everyone, I'm Manka from Weld.com. I hope everyone's doing good. Today we're gonna to be talking about planning your welds out. So I'm gonna show you the difference from doing the right way to the wrong way. So let's talk about our tacks. So uh, the tacks on this one, this is the bad, bad plate right here. So I kinda of just put my tacks wherever. So let's start right here. So I don't have no tacks right here. I only got one tack in this corner. The reason, when you don't have tacks in there, when you're welding on one side, that plate will just pull over, especially when you're running a hot process, like I'm running spray today. Also, I tacked my corners right here. I can't get into my, gr I can't get my grinder in that corner. I would have to get a Dremel or something. So it's gonna look very ugly and fat in that corner like a pregnant worm. Then over here, same thing, kind of uh, care where I tacked that. And also right here, I didn't clean this mill scale off. And I was such in a hurry that I put my plate upside down. How stupid is that? All right, so let's talk about a good piece of metal. So right here, I put tacks on this, tacks on both sides, and tacks right here. And also, I didn't put them in the corner. Uh, so you won't see this plate just bowing on one side. I could actually go ahead and weld this, and it won't bow. Uh, the corners, I didn't tack right here, or I didn't tack right here. It's going to be on the outside. So I could get my grinder and feather them out. So when I weld, I won't have a big, fat-looking weld or pregnant worm. All right, so the type of machine I'm using is a Lightning MTS-275. The type of gas is 95.5, uh, 5% oxygen, and 95% argon. Uh, I'm gonna be spraying, so my volts are gonna be about 24.5, and the wire feed speed's about 265. I really don't know because we're gonna kinda tune this up on the fly. So I'm gonna start right here and just kinda walk it all the way around, non-stop welding. Then we're gonna see what it looks like at the end. So I don't like that, it's too hot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop and adjust my machine on the fly. So I turned the bolts down, so here we go. So that's a little better. So I'm going to turn my bolts down a little bit and, and probably increase my wire feed speed. Almost there. So let's do this really quick on the fly. I went from 23.5 down to 22.4 on my bolts, then I and I increased my wire feed speed up to 300. We're just gonna bring the wire back down and then go up a half a volt. So. so right there is telling me I need more volts. Put that noise out. Now it's going too slow, like the wire is not going too slow. The reason I know that is because I can't travel fast. I gotta wait until that fills up the plate. So we're gonna go ahead and crank up our wire feed speed. Then this is probably be close to it. So I'm not gonna stop right here because I wanna kinda wrap this corner and make it look okay. Try the best as I can. Because I know I gotta stop. All right. Oh, I'm gonna increase my wire feed speed because I'm traveling way too slow still. All right. Plus, that popping is from not cleaning your plate prepping. All right, here we go. We're gonna do this again. I'm not even clipping my wire, I'm just going ahead and at it. See, just by taking your time and practicing on another plate. So I'm just stop right there. And we're just gonna start back up. Okay. So I'm just stopping there because I'm not comfortable. And we're gonna start right here. So, I, so I'm thinking right now, I'm in a rush. I got it close enough the settings and I'm just gonna kinda leave it there. I'm getting tired of adjusting the settings so I'm in a hurry. So the faster it's the latest ball down, the better I'm gonna be.
Before I move on, I want to show you this. Uh, this plate bowed. It's got about a 316 scap right here. Um, so that's pretty bad. That's why we need to put tacks everywhere and jump around on our heat. So there is ways to fix this. You can use a torch, a hammer, a hydraulic press, uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and carry this, carry on, and we're trying to avoid extra steps. That's what we want. All right, so I'm basically gonna start right here and work my way all the way to the end. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what's gonna happen on this gap, so we're just gonna give it a go and kind of adapt to the situation. If I got a pulse with the trigger, so be it, we gotta do it. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing like I did on this other side to this side. All right, we're done with plate number one. So let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit. So right here, that's pretty horrible. I got a lot of spatter, that's bad. You definitely don't wanna have a lot of spatter there or none at all. That's what you wanna aim for. Uh, I got a lot of, I got a crater right here. I didn't fill it in when I stopped. I didn't start back on where I left off. Didn't wrap this corner. This side, was, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. I was doing my machine big time on this side. It's horrible. I'm kind of ashamed that I laid this down, but that's what this whole side is. On this flat part right here, uh, I didn't pause and trigger it in and fill this stop part out. You can see where it ate away the plate and you can see the gap where the plate bend over. Just by looking at this plate, there's many things wrong with this. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, just take two minutes of your time and plan out your welds. That's all you gotta do to make them look way better. So step number one is weld sequence. So we're gonna talk, so we're gonna think about where we're gonna put this at. Just from my experience and what I think looks the best is I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna do step number one. I don't wanna start right here in the corner and go out because uh, if I start on that corner, I'll get spatter and it's cold. So I'm gonna start on, out here and go in. If, if I do get spatter, it's right here. I can take my grinder and feather it out or feather my hump out when it's cold. Um, also, when I start right here or start right here and it'll look, one, it'll look like one continuous weld from here all the way around. That corner will look nice and beautiful. So that's one. So we're gonna jump over here. We'll go to two. We'll go two and we go from here and go all the way around. We wanna make sure you're comfortable and all the way around to this middle side. Uh, we gotta grind our tacks a little bit. Not so much where they break. Just grind them down where, just a little bit where it won't look so humped up, uh, your weld won't. So that's two. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. We'll go three. And we're gonna go like this around here. And we're gonna stop right here. Then I wanna go continuous right here, but first we gotta weld this last, weld this last one. So we basically are gonna weld on the flat. So this would be number four. So that we're gonna do the same technique as we did over here. All right, so then we're gonna start over here because we put heat over here. So I'm gonna jump over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish this weld out. So we're done with that one, that's five. Then we're gonna jump over here and do this all the way around and meet this in. And that's it. First, I'm gonna clip my wire. That's gonna help start up. And also I'm gonna do a little dry run here make sure I'm comfortable. All right. All right, here's well number one. Just, we didn't get no spatter, so we're doing good so far. All right, if you want to like keep your starts and stops all even just by looking at this. Uh, so these plates are 12 inches long. So I'm stopping in the middle. That's what I'm aiming for. So I'm just going to kind of mark six inches. Then also I'm gonna mark it really big because you can't see it when there's a little mark. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here. So I'm gonna kind of start right here. Sorry if you're a little off, but it looks really a lot better when you're taking your time doing this. So let's go ahead. All right, so I usually start a little bit before or after the tack. The reason why is because I let my metal warm up a little bit and my weld's nice and hot, then I run over the previous tack. And, because, and it's wet, it's just nice and hot and wet. And it'll like melt that high spot away. Just make sure they're comfortable. 
that's the main thing. And when you go around the corners, you got a little bit of leeway. You can shake a little bit, but get prepared to move around that corner. Yeah, when you're going around that, when you're approaching that corner, you want to start getting ready, like as soon as you start starting. But time you get there. Dang it, I thought I was there. See, that's why you mark. <laughs> Things don't always go planned, that's how it is. So, my glasses got fogged up, so I thought this was the mark, so I stopped. Uh, I couldn't see. So here's another little helpful tip. I ain't gonna start right here, because uh, I'm, I'm a little cold. Well, not cold, but your weld's a little cold at first. So I'm gonna start right here and weld into that, then you're gonna have a nice transition. You can avoid grinding your high out. All right, so we're gonna go to number three. Look, we made it this time. Came out all right. All right, this one's going to be a tough one here, guys. But you don't have to go this far. It just takes practice. But the trick is, the trick is, is get comfortable make your adjustments by putting your cup down and hurry up wiggle your toes all the way across that's the way then then you get really comfortable but you kind of want to be on balls of your feet all right so we just got done doing the good plate and here's the bad plate from before so let's start right here so as you can see i got my crater showing a little bit i should have brought this up got a high high start right here you kind of just start and stop the whole way and it's very inconsistent it's not nice and steady all right, let's start right here. See, we got a good wrap corner right here and we're nice smooth transition all the way. Right here, I get a little bit high right here. I should grind it out, but it's easy. It still looks good. Right here, this is where I messed up, remember? I got uncomfortable, or not uncomfortable, but my glasses fogged up and I thought I was stopping right here. And that's still fine. Everything looks good. The corner looks good. All right, let's turn these plates a little bit. So look how bad that looks. See how that one looks? A lot more consistent, it looks cleaner. This has them big old buckshot spatter. All right, so back on the bad one. Not too shabby here, not too bad. I mean, I know it's a little wobbly, but we're all right, we're doing all right here. Boom, see that spot? We didn't start far enough up over here because we're in a hurry. And we came over here and look at this. The corn looks ugly. Look at that, spatter. That's from starting right here and going in that way, and also not having your machine tuned in right. Then let's go down here. It's inconsistent right here, not being com comfortable. Right here, I started getting more comfortable. Comfortable, stopped shy wrapping around this, and I left a crater there. So let's go ahead and talk about this one. So, so we're all good here. We got all the BBs off, we took the spatter off. This is a little high. I could feather this down a little bit with my grinder and blend it in. So we're all good here. This, this corner looks nice and consistent right here. I could spend a little bit more time up there holding it, but overall this is very passable. We're going in, everything's consistent. Look, here's a good, nice start and stop. Look at that. They're, it's nice and smooth because transition. It's not high, it's not low. That's what you want to aim for right there. And everything's nice and clean, no undercut. This corner is, looks beautiful. We're good. Then, then this top, Right here, I mean, this vertical, see how there's no buckshot? I mean, that's why I started right here in case something happened bad. So, went right here, came in. So, you can see right here, just by looking, looking right here. Look, start, stop, start, stop. Didn't care at all, tuning my machine in. Right here, stopped in the middle, I'm in the middle plate. It just looks like, everything looks like, you know what I mean? I planned it, everything looks the same, nice, consistent. Because people do look at that kind of stuff. Uh, came right here just kind of walked around the corner and stopped right here. And then started up here, Look, same thing, came down. Looks pretty bad, looks crappy. And same thing, wrap around. So before we turn the plate, let's jump over here on this good side. Everything looks good, like it. 
Got to come down here, camera guy, a little low. So everything's nice and clean, no spatter, except right there. You could take a chip and hammer and make it come off. Or, I mean, not ch yeah, chip and hammer or a uh, chisel. So we're good here, the corner's consistent. We wrapped it all the way around. So give me a second, let me turn these plates. So we're all good here. I mean, look at that. Inconsistent, bad. Looks like there's a valley right there. That valley could cause a crack, linear crack over time for vibration. So we're all good down here, but not good here. It's bad. I mean, you guys can see the point. You guys just, just what I'm talking about. So you decide what's better. There you go. All right, low review. So the key thing is plan your welds out. Don't be in a hurry. This what took two minutes, five minutes at the most. All right, plan your weld out. Even if your boss is over you, hey, you want me to do a good job or you want me to do this? All right, you decide. All right, so hey, I'm Mike Beecher, Man Cub. Remember, weld mean, weld green.